that's that's a really really tough one um, I would love for the family to be able to come in I would love there's that's that's the hardest part is making that phone call and saying no you cannot come in it's too too much of a risk because um, I'm very much a people person and I know that part of part of the part of helping them get better is if if they could see their family so I know that's that's one of the toughest I I hate that so much um, so that's why I try to represent their family as much as possible hold their hand um, let them cry on my shoulder that's happened multiple times just be there for them that presence I don't care if I had to sit in that room all day um, try to be their family as much as possible sad um, you do everything you do everything you can not to come to that point because the outcome once they're on a ventilator is very seldom good um, when we put them on a ventilator you know there's a tube that goes in their in their throat and they have multiple other tubes and IVs and multiple other things going on um, one of the first things we do whenever they're on the ventilator is we start proning them Proning them is whenever we lay them on their stomach. Um, that's not a pleasant thing. Us as nurses, we get the orders from the doctors to sedate and paralyze our patients, so we put them in a medically induced coma. And then that's when the proning begins. Um, we try to turn them the best we can, but they basically just lay there on their stomach. We try to, try to make them as comfortable as possible, but I know that that is not, it's not a pleasant thing. Um, for the public out there, I, I think that if the public could see some of that, it might change their outlook on whether or not COVID is real, because it is real. Um, being on a ventilator is not, it's not a pleasant thing for the patient, and it's not a pleasant thing for us as nurses and medical staff to look at. Numb would be the word that I describe sometimes because with the amount of patients that we've lost, you have to, you have to be careful um, how you let yourself feel um, because it's happened so much. You have to, you have to learn how to, you have to learn how to cope with it um, because whenever you, whenever you're there holding that patient's hand as they, as they go into eternity, um, you want to you want to cry and let out all your feels, but then then again you still have to remain strong um, because you know that there's another patient waiting right next door that might be going through the same thing. So you have to put on your game face and and just repeat and keep doing the same things. Um, but losing a patient, it's it's unexplainable. Um, like I said, you you feel like you put in all this work, and you know the patient has too. Um, and then that's the end result. Um, so you have to, used to be whenever I first started as a nurse, I could, uh, I could go home from my job and, and I kind of let my work here, you know, I didn't, I didn't go home and think about it too much. Or I tried not to, there were some days that I did, but now it's like you get home and my mind's racing at nighttime yet wondering what else could have I did for that patient? Um, could have I asked the doctor for another medication? Could have I been in the room more? Could have I called the family more? And uh, so that's, it's, it's tough. You take, now I take it home with me and I, I think about all these deaths. 